authors, and today I'm going to record a short video that's going to talk about Git. Now, I'm making this video due to feedback from the class, uh, junior design class, where a lot of the students said that a lot of the EE majors, electrical engineering majors, had never used Git and didn't know how to use it. And so this video is specifically for electrical engineering majors, and it is not going to go in depth about all the nuances of Git, but it's going to give you a top level view and give you an idea of how to use Git and hopefully how to avoid some of the pitfalls. So first thing, I'm going to let you know what Git is not. I'm going to let you know what you should not do with it. The main thing, it's not a document repository. So don't put Word files up there. Don't put PowerPoint files up there. Git is a code repository. So it should mainly be used for raw code files. One of the things that Git does, it, it takes a difference whenever a new file is committed. And it records that change in the file. Now, if you put things like images or complex files, such as PowerPoint applications, it can't take a difference between the two because so much changes. And what happens, your repository explodes on the server because it has to store all the information every time. So Git should be used for only your code files. You shouldn't store binary files there. You shouldn't store uh, audio recordings. It should just be for the code. Now. What is Git? Like I said, it's a code repository, but it allows for collaboration between multiple programmers, and it enables you to have a central repository for your code, and it will keep track of the most recent version of the code while allowing every developer to have their own version of it. The versions are called branches. So everybody can have their own branch of the code, and then when your code is working, you can check it back into master. Let me go ahead and share my screen here, and I'm going to start walking you through some of the nuances of it. There are a lot of pages that you can go to on the Internet and read about what, it, what Git does and how to use it. One of the problems, a lot of these are written by people who are really, really, really good using Git, and they are complex. Git can become very complex. But here is an example of how Git is intended to work. So you have the master branch that's in the middle here. And each one of these dots represents a code commit, a piece of code that is being put into master. And so you start off at this bubble with an initial commit, and then there's a branch that's created. So you're working over here on your branch, and then there are some more git commits to master, and then somebody else has created a branch. And then here you are merging your work back into the master branch. Merging is where a lot of problems occur. If you know especially for this junior design project, this small project, if you are going to be working on a particular file, try to make that your own file. Try to make it to where you're not going to work on anybody else's. One of the biggest complexities with Git is doing a merge, where you have multiple changes to the same file, and you have to put those changes together. So the easiest way to avoid this is to start with a good software architecture, and then a good software framework. So this initial commit bubble is hopefully your framework, which sets all the function prototypes. Now you say, okay, person A, developer A, you're gonna work inside these functions inside this file. Person B, you're gonna work inside these functions inside that file. They should not cross. Organize your work first, code with intent so you don't get spaghetti code, and it will also make Git much easier to work with and live with. So in this example, your work, you branched it off from the master, you did some work, and then you merge it back into master, and then somebody else with their work, they merge their work into master. In the end, you have a completed, finished product. Load the software, it's GitHub Desktop. It'll handle the majority of the Git issues for you. So go ahead and download this, I'm gonna do this, and we're going to put this file 
onto our machine, and it is going to do the majority of the work that we have to with Git so that we won't have to go to the command line and type a lot of the commands. Because when you go and see somebody who really knows what they're doing with Git, they go to a command prompt, usually in Linux, because real Git users don't do um, uh, Windows. And so this one's for Windows. And if you get in trouble, go to somebody who knows how to do it on the desktop. Otherwise, come over here. All right, so now we're gonna go Sign into GitHub Enterprise. Be <laughs> HTTPS colon backslash backslash GitHub dot gotech dot edu, and it should ask us to sign in. And I'm going to say sign in using my browser because I want it to send it to our single sign in page where I have my information saved, and I'm going to sign in with this. And that should let us in. Now it sees that it's there, everything is good, we're going to finish, and it's going to bring up my code repositories. So this is where we're going to start at, and it's going to say, what do you want to do? What we need to do is you need to go and grab the files that I'm providing to you. So go to Canvas, go to Lecture 2, Project Wonderland, Inside that PowerPoint on slide number 17, there's this GitHub link. Go to that in a web browser, and you'll see the screen. Now, only one member of your team needs to do these steps. You need to use the template that I've provided to create your own Git repository on your GitHub server. So make sure that you're signed into GitHub Enterprise on the web page. Use this template. It'll bring up this screen. And I'm just going to name this temp example repo, something like that. Create, create repository from this template. And so only one member of your team needs to do this. And when you do this, it's going to take all my files and copy them over to a workspace that you can use. So now this is what everybody else in the team should see. Once that individual who created it shares it with you, you should have the ability to this green button with code. Go here. Here's where it says clone and copy this link. Now we go back over to GitHub, uh, the desktop application, and you're going to go File, Clone Repository. And here, if you are the individual who created this repository, you can see it now, Brothers Temp Example. Well, nope, what did I call it? I might have to refresh, hold on just one second. There it is, Temp Example Repo, it's right there. And if you're the person who created this, click on that and click clone. For everybody else in the team, take that URL that you copied, paste it right here. Choose your local location. Choose where you want the files to reside on your local computer. So a clone is taking it from the server, putting it on your local machine. And say clone. And it's going to do this. It's going to copy all the files down. And that finished it up right there. We can now go and look at that file location. And I said to put mine in uh, Documents GitHub. And here is the repo. And so you can see here's a readme file, here's projects, here's Wonderland, and here are the, the applications that we are providing to you uh, to use. If you look in the desktop application now, temp example repo is the current repo, current branches master and we've never fetched. It's a good idea whenever you start working to just fetch. That gets the latest version from the server. That fetch pulls down the latest version. You have to do actually a fetch pull. Fetch is getting the information about the server. Pull is bringing those files down to your machine. But we can see that nothing has changed, and so let's go and change something. We're going to just go into this uh, repo and go into a readme file and I'm going to just open this readme file I like to use notepad plus plus and I'm going to go this is an example of how to change a file and save that if we go back over to, to uh, github desktop application 
we can now see that it has identified that a file has changed and it's highlighting what has changed right here. So we want to push this to the server so other people can see this file, but we don't want to put it on master yet. Master branch is only once your code works 100% do you put it onto master. Before that, you do development in your own branch. So we're going to do this drop down, and I'm going to say, brothers, I like to use my last name, underscore example, underscore branch. I like to use something that first is my name, so everybody knows whose branch it is. Second, something descriptive, so that when I look through my branches, I understand what those are and I know what to do with them. And I'm going to create a new branch. Create new branch. It has that name. It's going to create it from master. I create that branch. Leave my changes on master or bring my changes to this branch. I want to bring those changes with me. So I'm going to switch over to my new branch. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. This has not been pushed to the server yet. This is only on your local machine. It's not on the server. So I'm going to go ahead and put it up to the server. Before you can do that, you have to do a commit. So at the bottom left-hand side of the screen, here is commits. You're going to title your commit, um, changed readme, is what I'm going to say, because that's what I did. Added, and now you're going to give a more detailed description. Added a line to the readme file for class example, period. And I'm going to commit it to brothers. Again, a commit is not going to the server. It's only pushing it to your local repository. Now I need to take that local repository and push it out to the server. That's what this comes up. And it says, we would suggest that you publish your branch. Publishing it pushes it out to the um, uh, server. So let's go back. Um, create a pull request. We'll cover that in a second. We can now go to the web page. This is the server. The web page represents the server. The Desktop app represents your local machine. So if we go to the server, we can switch branches now. Here's our branch that we just made. And we can see how to push less than a minute ago. And we can open up these files. And I think it'll show right there. Okay, so the files were changed. We put them into our local repository with commit. We then move that local repository to the server with a, in this case it was published, but that's done through a push. So let's go and make one more change so we can see the natural order. So that worked, everything was good. Now we're gonna say, ah, I don't really like that. So let's make change number two. Change, change number two. We're gonna save that going back to this again it registers that there's a change and now we're going to say change number two change two to text file again I changed the file okay commit to my local repository and now it's going to say push because that branch has been published now we can continue to push to it so we're going to push and that again sends it up to the server. So now anybody can switch to our branch. Let's say we want to switch back and forth and we're like, I don't know if this change was good. Let me go and check what the truth was, what the master branch was. We can just switch to master. Now that all our changes have been pushed up to the server, we can switch to the master. Simple as that. We click here. It's going to say it's changed. Do you want to? Yeah. And it takes away. Okay. We haven't lost anything. Let's go back to this, switch back to our branch. It's changed. Yes, put it there. That's how easy it is. You don't have to keep multiple folders on your computer with version one, version two, version three. It does it all for you. Git is a very powerful tool. Use this tool. Okay, last thing we want to do, we want to take our changes and put them into master. So we've validated our changes, our changes are good, we want to put them into master so everybody will use them. Create a pull request. When we do that, it opens up the web app. And this is a summary 
of what happened. And you can say, in this pull request, I updated the text file. And we can now create this pull request. It's going to check and see if it can put those two together automatically. Now, here's where good coding practice comes in. Creating your framework, your software framework with function prototypes and isolating people and saying, hey, you go and work in this function, you go and work in this function, different files if you can. Separate people out so they're not working in the same function in the same file. If you do that, you won't have merge conflicts, okay? If there are merge conflicts, go to the person on your team who knows Git and figure out how to do that. If you don't know, if you don't know Git on your team, come to me, come to the TA, come to somebody, and we'll help you with this. But we don't need to do anything because it says it's good. So we can just merge the pull request, confirm merge, and now you're all set. Brothers example branch can be safely deleted. We're going to go ahead and delete that. Well, actually, there are a little bug. If you leave it here, sometimes it gets into a wonky state. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to master. And now that I've switched to master, I'm going to go ahead and delete this branch because we don't need it anymore. Our work has been done. It's been committed into master. So that branch is gone, but all of it now you can see in the history, in this version control history, that I branched, I made two changes to a text file, I uh, committed, and then I did the pull request. You can look at it in this factor and you can see what was done. And you can roll back to these different versions of the code. You can change to any version of the code that you need to at any time. It's a little harder, but you can. Um, okay, so now let's go to our local computer. This is changed by another program. Yes. Oh no, our changes are all gone. Everything is terrible. What are we going to do? The changes are on the server. We haven't pulled them to our local machine yet. So we go back to the desktop app again, and we are on master. We're going to fetch. And it says, oh, we went and looked at the server. There are changes. What do you want to do? And I say, I want to pull those changes down. So it's going to pull them down. Now we are on the master branch. I made changes in my own branch. I did my development. It was all good. Then I merged that with the master branch. And so now I'm on master. Update the file. There are my changes. Okay, that's how you use Git for an intro. If this application makes it very easy to use Git, if you get, if your Git gets messed up, go and talk to somebody who knows how to do it. And that's how we do it in the real world. Also, there's always one member of the team who is really, really good at Git, and the rest of us mess things up. And then you go to that person, you say, "Hey, I messed things up. Help me fix it," and you learn how to do it better. Okay. So, hopefully this helps you get on the right track with Git repository. You need to set Git up. You need to use Git. This is a tool that is industry-wide. Um, Git, SVN, there's a couple flavors. Git is the most popular one that is used in industry. Um, you will use some tool that is equivalent to this. They're all the same. Git is the most common. Learn the terminology. Learn how to use it. Um, this is very, very, very important. That's it. Have a good day. If you have any questions, please send me an email. Let me know.